the Voron clones are multiplying and shrinking. This is the Trudon 2.0, and this is the Trudon Mini. They're derivatives of the Voron 2.4 design in a consumer friendly form factor, with only basic assembly required to get up and running. No printing of parts, assembly of components, or wiring of electronics required. The manufacturer of these printers, Formbot, aka Vividino, is perhaps best known for their Voron kits. They make building a Voron more accessible by simplifying the process of acquiring all of the necessary hardware. With the Trudon, they've taken it a step further by eliminating most of the assembly process too. If you're a longtime subscriber, you'll already be intimately familiar with these printers. In fact, this printer right here is the one that kicked off this channel, with the very first video being an unboxing of this very printer. Building from there, I developed an entire series of videos, from beginner's guides to advanced upgrade tutorials. Since then, a lot has changed both on this channel and in the 3D printing industry as a whole. I've moved on to cover more varied topics, and the industry has matured even further, with a whole host of great new options on the market for high-speed, high-performance 3D printers. And the Trudon has matured too. We now have an additional size option in the Mini, 250mm cubed versus 350 of the original. But that's not all. Since their release, both the 2.0 and the Mini have been upgraded to Pro versions. They now come with Clipper firmware pre-installed, a 5-inch color touchscreen, stealth burner printhead, and tap nozzle probing. In contrast, the original Trudon 2.0 came with RepRap firmware, a basic LCD screen with rotary knob, the afterburner printhead, and an inductive probe. Upgrade kits have been released progressively, starting with a stealth burner and then tap, and soon they'll be releasing a clipper upgrade kit too, to bring existing owners up to speed with the latest Pro version features. I'll be covering that whole process in a dedicated video. Even if you're buying this printer with the Pro upgrades pre-installed, I think you'll find it quite interesting. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Prior to the Pro upgrade, the Trudon had been shipping with RepRap firmware. Among all of the design differences between the Trudon 2.0 and a Voron 2.4, the firmware had to be the most notable. While it is possible for a Voron to run RepRap, or even Marlin, the mass majority of people choose to use Clipper. It's the firmware recommended by the Voron team, and it's the one that most aftermarket upgrades are developed for. It's not to say that there's anything wrong with RepRap firmware. In fact, in a lot of ways, it is superior to Clipper. It has many of the same advanced features, like input shaping and pressure advance, all while running only on the 32-bit MCU of the printer's mainboard. No external microcontroller required. And there have been many great resources developed for the Trudon by the team responsible for the branch of RepRap firmware that runs on this printer. Jay and the rest of Team Gloomy really stepped up and provided support where none existed with helpful guides and documentation on their GitHub page. And the Team Gloomy Discord quickly became the unofficial forum for discussion about the Trudon. But ultimately, you have to give the people what they want. And for the majority of folks, that's Clipper. For owners of the original Trudon 2.0, I developed a Clipper firmware configuration and documented the process in a dedicated video. If you're interested in learning how Clipper works in more detail, I'd highly encourage you to give that a watch. I certainly learned a lot in the process of making it. For new buyers of the Pro version, Clipper will come pre-installed. So that was a bit of a history lesson. Now let's focus in on the Trudon Mini and see what it's all about. Most of what I cover here will also apply to the Trudon 2.0, since it only differs in size. Don't be alarmed if the yellow parts suddenly turn to red. I'm going to reuse some footage of the Trudon 2.0 for my coverage of the Mini. Despite having covered this printer extensively in a multi-part video series, I've never really done a proper review of it. I think it's pretty self-evident that I like it, or else I wouldn't have dedicated so much time to it. But is it the perfect printer? No. Is it a good printer and a fun one to own? Yes. Is it the right printer for you? Maybe. It's important to understand that the Trudon isn't just a pre-assembled Voron with metal parts instead of plastic. Many of the parts have been redesigned entirely in order to conform to the constraints of mass manufacturing. So when I call it a clone, I only do so as a matter of convenience. A better term would be derivative. Every component of the mainframe on the Trudon is either metal or injection molded plastic. The base is one solid component, with the bed rigidly mounted on top and the electronics housed underneath. It has a core XY motion system with a flying gantry that is belt driven, giving it four points of adjustment to ensure the gantry is perfectly parallel to the bed. MGN12 linear rails are used for motion on all axes, with propulsion provided by Moon's NEMA 17 motors. The printhead is the Voron Stealth Burner, with a 4010 axial fan for heatsink cooling 
and a 5015 radial blower for part cooling. These plastic parts are FDM 3D printed from glass fiber filled ABS, which gives them a very high quality finish. Bed probing is accomplished with the RC8 version of Voron Tap with the OptoTap V2 PCB, which has a convenient onboard status light. The hot end is a clone E3D V6 with a brass nozzle. The stealth burner upgrade kit for older generation Trudons can be configured from factory with a high flow hot end. Unfortunately, this isn't an option when buying the printer as a whole. A tool head PCB provides easy access to heater, thermistor, probe, and fan wires in case any require replacement. The connection is made with a single bus cable which is routed through a series of drag chains to a breakout board on the base of the printer. This breakout board connects back to the Octopus X7 mainboard, which was designed by Big Tree Tech specifically for the Trudon. The system runs on 24 volts, provided by a 200 watt power supply with an AC heated bed. The interface to the Pro Model Trudons is a 5 inch color touchscreen running clipper screen, which provides easy access to all of the printer's controls. The printer can also be controlled remotely via a web interface using the onboard Wi-Fi module on a 2.4 GHz network. If you prefer a wired connection, there's also an Ethernet port on the rear. The entire printer is enclosed with acrylic panels, providing a draft-free environment for printing ABS or other warp-prone materials. A ventilation fan on the rear with integrated carbon filter can be used to purify the air during or after printing. To top it off, a chamber light provides a bright environment for easy viewing of prints, either in person or remotely. Remote viewing could be accomplished by adding a USB webcam, taking advantage of the two USB-A ports on the front panel. So that's the Trudon in a nutshell. But how does it compare to the competition? Well, truthfully, I think the Trudon is in a category of its own. The target demographic for this printer should be someone that wants to gain a deeper understanding of 3D printing without investing all of the time to build a printer from a kit. It's an accessible entry point into the world of printer modding and customization. Since it shares many of the features of the Voron 2.4, most of the Voron mods are compatible with it. It's got open source hardware and firmware, so you're free to do with it what you wish. Formbot themselves have done a great job of providing an upgrade path for this printer, but even if they were to stop supporting it, it would continue to receive updates from the community. The same can't necessarily be said for some of the other printers on the market. But if you're more interested in a printer as an appliance rather than a hobby, you'd be better off with a turnkey solution, like those provided by Creality or Cheap. These come out of the box ready to print and print fast. The Trudon requires about three hours of assembly time before it can be up and running. From a mechanics point of view, it can hit the same top speeds and accelerations as the fastest printers on the market today. But there are a few shortcomings that will prevent it from printing as fast, specifically flow and cooling. The stock E3D V6 hot end is ancient technology by the standards of today's high flow hot ends. It maxes out at around 13 cubic millimeters per second, versus 30 or more for other solutions. A quick and easy upgrade is to add a CHT nozzle, which bumps the max flow up to 20 cubic millimeters per second. But ultimately, you'll probably want to look at replacing this with a higher flow hot end if you want to do some seriously fast printing. Unfortunately, the electronics on the Trudon can only support up to a 50 watt heater cartridge, ruling out ultra high flow hot ends that require 60 watts or more without rewiring. The second major limitation is cooling. Most modern high-speed printers include some sort of auxiliary cooling fan, which provides supplementary airflow to assist with part cooling. This enables higher print speeds without layers curling up. The Trudon doesn't include one by default, but this is something you could consider adding yourself. The similarly sized Chidi X Smart 3 doesn't have one either, but I found a way to add it. As another point of comparison to other printers, input shaving on the Trudon is a little less convenient. The toolboard doesn't have an integrated accelerometer. Rather, you need to connect a USB accelerometer in order to measure resonances. In reality, you should need to do this very infrequently, only when making significant changes to belt tension or tool head mass. So this isn't a major limitation, but it's something to consider. The input shaping results were decent, with a maximum acceleration of 10,900 on X and 8,700 on Y. There's a significant component of Z-axis motion when moving in Y which isn't uncommon when using tap, but the resonant frequencies are coincident, so it doesn't seem to have an adverse effect on the maximum acceleration. In contrast, I measured a lower maximum y-axis acceleration of 7100 on the Chidi X-Max 3, and that's without tap, so the Trudon definitely holds its own here. Another thing that the Trudon has going for it is the use of vanilla clipper screen. Too often, manufacturers try to reinvent the wheel with their own UIs, 
which are actually less capable than the existing solution. The Trudon mini bed is dead flat, less than 0.1 millimeters of deviation. Gantry leveling helps ensure the plane of the nozzle is perfectly parallel to the plane of the bed, and eliminates the need to do manual adjustment. With a bed this flat and a perfectly level gantry, bed meshing is optional, rather than being a necessity. In other aspects, the print quality is comparable, and very much up to the current standards. The first bench I attempted completed in a respectable 13 minutes, but it looked dreadful, because I was hitting the limits of both flow and cooling. After replacing the stock nozzle with the CHT, the results look much better. The corners aren't very sharp because of the excessive smoothing caused by input shaping at these high 20,000 mm per second squared accelerations. A more modest 40 minute benchy was the sweet spot for cooling and sharpness of details, which is right in line time wise with what most fast printers will give you with their default slicer profiles. Now let's talk about price and value. The 250 mm cube build volume of the mini puts it in a very competitive category. You've got the Bamboo P1S, GDX Plus 3, Reality K1C, and Two Trees SK1, among so many others, all with similar size and features. On the other hand, the full size Trudon 2.0 doesn't have much competition. The closest competitor would be the Chidi X Max 3, but that has a slightly smaller build volume at 330 cubed versus 350. The Mini is currently selling for $599, $100 less than the P1S. The build volume is a little bit smaller since you only get 230 millimeters in Z and 250 in X and Y versus 256 on all axes for the P1S, but otherwise the features are quite similar. Compared to the P1S, you get a much better screen. Better visibility into the printer thanks to the brighter light and clear acrylic panels, and all open source hardware and software. You lose the ability to easily upgrade to multicolor printing by adding an AMS, but if you're up for the challenge, you could build an enraged rabbit carrot feeder, which allows you to print with up to 8 colors. The kit version of the Voron 2.4 with the same 250mm size is actually more expensive than the mostly pre-assembled Trudon Mini, and that requires you to print your own parts. So that's been my coverage of the Trudon Mini, and indirectly the Trudon 2.0 Pro. This is an awesome little printer. It's come a long way in a short time, and it continues to get better and better. So let me know what you think of this printer down in the comments. While you're down there, please give this video a like, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. My name's Taylor. This is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.